<laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Reaching New Heights podcast with me, Megan Gallagher. Today, I am so honored and I have the absolute privilege of sitting down with the amazing, the marvelous Icon Tips, a.k.a. Casey. Thank you so much for being here, Casey. No, you. thank you for that uh, intro. That was really, really nice. Of course. I feel special. You know, I always feel special when people want to talk to me. Yeah. You know, I mean, because I feel like communication is kind of thin these days across the platform. So either we text in or email. And so when somebody actually wants to talk to me, I'm like, okay, I feel, let's do it. Yes. It's so so refreshing just to to have a sit down conversation. 100%. I love it. So tell me, Casey, just a little bit about your journey of kind of, where you grew up and what inspired you about fashion and just the arts and just what inspired you to follow your dreams? Well, um, I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, Mm -hmm. um, to be exact. Um, A super traditional city. Yeah. Um, And I was raised with my grandma. So I was uh, really influenced by her because I I just grew up under her. Uh, I all I was a grandma's boy, mm-hmm. so whatever she was excited about or whatever she you know put interest in, I was kind of just you know following behind her. And yeah. so randomly, she was into her threads, her clothing. You know, um, she has a. We come from a super religious background, so church was a thing. Yes, was the thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, of course, we all know going to church requires you to dress. And so uh, as uh, from as far back as I can remember from a kid, um, I was just always watching her, like, mm. get dressed and, mm-hmm. you know, um, collect her hats and her bags. You know, she never wore the same thing twice. It was almost like a sin, yeah. if you will. Yeah. And so um, – I, I it caught my attention because of you know things uh, being uh, shiny or glittery and all that kind of stuff. But as I got older, I almost started fading out of it. And you know because she raised me and I was with her all the time, I would be with her when mm-hmm. she would go to stores and you know to places to pick up her things. And you know I started knocking over stuff, running around, you know <laughs> being all crazy. And then all of a sudden, I don't know how, I don't know what caused it, but I stopped and was like, oh, my God, I love this. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I became interested. So I started touching things instead of knocking it over and, like, asking her when we were going to go, Grandma, when we going to her, – her, um, her favorite uh, department store at the time was called Cotton's. <laughs> <laughs> It's no longer there, uh, yeah. but yeah, it, that it was a huge, a huge store that that sold, you know, like dresses and suiting and stuff like that. And so, um, as I became of age, she would um, stop mm-hmm. going because she was getting older, and she would send me. Mm-hmm. So it was my responsibility to make sure, um, you know, she had what she wanted. That's how I started learning different materials. That's how I started learning about hosiery and stockings yeah. and opaque and, you know, the different types of things that, you know, you should know when you're into this stuff. But it, you know, by becoming her, she was my first client, my Aww, grandma. That's so sweet. Like looking back at it now, I'm like, oh, I really used to like dress my grandma. Yeah. So... That's how it all started for me. And, of course, uh, you know, matriculating through <clears throat> middle school and high school, I did the sports thing because mm-hmm. I just felt like that's what I was supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Alabama Alabama is a huge football um, state. So um, I would be in football practice and then I would get out. She had me uh, Vogue and AL subscriptions. Like, I, th- that's all I thought about. Like, I was just yeah. ready to leave practice and go home and yeah. see what was the latest. So... I love that. I I, <laughs> I resonate with that a lot because mm-hmm. for me growing up, I was I loved many different things and I had so many interests at once. And I was like, I want to play the clarinet one day. And mm-hmm. then I loved Devil Wears Prada. Oh and when that came out, I was like, and I just would cover my room with just pictures and cutouts from Vogue and Elle and Harper's Bazaar and all of these magazines and. It's just, it's the same thing as, you know, it just kind of puts you in a different world. And oh, it's, 100%. it's just, you, you feel that, you know, giddy manifesting, you're just connecting to something bigger than you. And yeah. 
Because you're able to see it. You know, yes. like they create these ethereal and mystical worlds uh, yes. just to take a picture. Yeah. And those things live forever. And you're able yeah. to, to, to touch the page and really imagine imagining yourself in that position. Or for me, it was it was more so about being responsible for yes. those type of things. Like, yeah, I, I wanted to be like, I, well, I was like, I wanted to um make these things possible for other people like yes. oh my god i want to i could do this and you know i could th- i wanted to create these things so that people could like you tear them out and put it on their wall yes. and that's what it was about for me i love that and so, so i get it for you personally was your grandmother a big influence and in kind of inspiring you or giving you confidence or just oh You're yeah amazing you can do anything oh 100 she was the reason um she was the reason that I actually chose the, you know, the the path once I graduated high school. Like yeah. my first year of college, I went undecided because I was just afraid to choose the wrong thing. Yeah. You know, I didn't yeah. I didn't want to feel judged and, you know, I didn't want to feel like, oh, and people questioning me and why I wanted to do it. Because, like I said, I come from such a traditional background. Yes. And, um, you know. All of my friends and people that I was working around at the time, you know, they either went into law or yes. medicine, yes. you know, the traditional things. And so I decided to go um, undecided my yeah. first semester because I was just, again, afraid. And so um, the start of my second semester, um, right before my grandmother passed away, I was like, man, like, I don't know what to do. And she was like, look, do it. Live your life. Yeah. You know, like, this is what you want to do. Do it. Yes. And so I took up um, fashion merchandising. I love that. And so that, from there, it's just been like a incline of, you know, me getting closer and closer to being responsible Mm -hmm. for those pages that we want to rip out. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) That's amazing. I, for me personally, I think just... I feel lucky that I grew up in such a positive family mm-hmm. and I I believe everyone has their own struggles in life but I believe that it always just serves a bigger purpose 100%. in the long run and maybe it'll take a few years to kind of connect the dots and realize oh wait that was meant to happen yeah. and um but I just <clears throat> remember growing up my family was just such a support system because I Amazing. every day was like I want to try something new and I don't know and I don't, am I good enough? <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from the Bay Area. Okay. Yes, San Francisco. Okay, so you're from West Coast. Yes, and I I just was rattled by so much insecurity too. Mm. But I my parents I feel almost trained me to just you know we cut the negative thoughts out. Yeah. Those can wait, and wow. your dreams are right here. That's so, amazing. So what are you going to choose, Megan? Don't choose fear. Don't. Don't, you know, get to 90 years old and look back on your life and think, well, I let the negative thoughts win. Mm -hmm. I let them kind of just, oh, well, Megan, is that realistic? Do you really think you can, you can do anything you want. And I will believe that until I am (laughs) into infinity and beyond. (laughs) (laughs) This is so true. I stand by that with you. I feel like if you truly want to do it and desire to do it yes. you can you you can achieve it and it the thing is you have to become uh comfortable with the process you know embracing that because a lot of times you know we want immediate responses or immediate results yes. or you know and we don't look at the actual steps that we no, have to take not and, at and all. you know what i'm saying and become comfortable with those steps and if one step towards the goal every day or every week, you're doing amazing. Right. And th- that's oh, that just really resonated with me because I, I feel as if in the world we live in today, mm-hmm. a lot of it is social media and a Correct. lot of it is the likes and the comments. And it's such that in- in- instant gratification where yep. you're like, oh, my gosh, ding, ding, ding. And it triggers that like, mm-hmm. whoa. But I think people truly and myself included, I can forget that. The journey of following your dreams and just reaching your soul's purpose, Mm -hmm. it's not going to happen in one day or even a few years or, I mean, a lifetime. It won't. And that's why, you know, going back to me telling you how, you know, when someone actually wants to talk to me, that that makes me feel special because, uh, 
you know, we exist in this world now where things are instant yes. and things are, you know, silently expressed and well, not even silently expressed. They're like emotionally, emotionally, emotionless express like yes. meaning meaning if you text me and say something i i can't read you know what i'm saying i can't necessarily of read course. your emotion with that yes so when we were able to sit down and talk and look at each other and feel each other's energy yes well you can't you, you can't go around that no, I know what you mean. It's yeah. so refreshing and it's just like a real connection. Correct. We can read each other's body language, like mm-hmm. you said, and just be on the same page. And it's not, hey, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, mm, excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> Assumptions or like thinking something is awkward and it's not. Yes. Or, you know, it it sucks. Yes. It sucks. It truly, truly sucks. And so I use, I mean, inst- Instagram, social media, all of that yeah. stuff. I, I have gotten to a, a place of just using it. Um, more so for motivational and work purposes. I love it. And I, I really, and I tell people now, I just spoke on a panel a couple of days ago at um, uh, Pasadena City College. It was for- That's uh, amazing. It was uh. for high school kids uh, that are like getting ready to graduate and, you know, who need help with, you know, direction yes. and yes. figuring it out. Yes, yes, yes. And so they, you know, they all had questions that that um, exist in this world of oh how do we how do we do it how do we get to it and you know I tell them all the time like look I know you guys are going to continue to use social media because that's what the world is yes. right now so what I urge you to do is just um, try to like manipulate and follow things that will feed and fuel you yes you know like yeah. if you follow something or someone and you feel like when when you view their content and you feel um you get this energy of like not knowing what to do or you yes. feel like oh my gosh what you question yourself yes you question what you do you question your actions and start questioning the universe like why am i not this why am i not that let it go what you follow should be things that make you feel at ease that make you feel like you're doing the right thing so true you know what i'm saying yeah like utilize the space if you're gonna use it make yeah. it work for you yes D- oh, that's so true because i i personally know that there's anytime i'm just start i find myself scrolling mm-hmm. i can easily just in five seconds be triggered by people i've never met in real life oh my god and i'm like megan <laughs> <laughs> like throw it just l- let it go. Let it go immediately. Let it go. Like, like choose that immediately. Yeah. Because when you don't, it re- it starts to resonate and simmer in your soul, and it's harder to get rid of at that point, oh, which turns yeah. into anxiety. Yeah. Turns into depression, and you don't even know why you feel the way you do. No, and it's hard because you you aren't with them in person, so Correct. you're like, well, what? But what did they do to make me feel this way? Mm-hmm. I I don't I don't know them personally. I don't want to judge them. But then you're like, but I feel <laughs> so triggered. <laughs> We have to stop that. We have to cushion ourselves. We have to cushion ourselves. We yeah. really do. We really do. And I and I I mean I'm, I'm guilty of it. Like I said, when I wake up in the morning, when I, well when I used to wake up in the morning, the first thing I did was check my phone, check Instagram. Like it was the first thing I did. Mm-hmm. So I had to check myself. And so I was like, all right, Casey, if you're gonna get up every morning and 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 uh, pick up your phone and go to Instagram, do it to help motivate and change some lives. So what I right. do every morning, I wake up. And I stay in my bed and I I pray from my bed every morning and I and I take the prayer Mm -hmm. and I post it. Yeah. That's the first thing you see from me every day. Yeah. And it's become such a trend now. Mornings when I have to get up and and, and, and run out quick or have to work early or mm-hmm. whatever the case may be, people are like messaging me like, oh, my God, no morning prayer, no mm-hmm. ceiling prayer. Because I usually just do it from my bed. I snap a picture of my yeah. ceiling yeah. and I just, you know, post a prayer. And I, I, I'm i continuing to do that because I want to drive that narrative of people utilizing their space and platform properly. I love that. And that's just that's so mindful of you. That's I like using that word because you're not, you know, doing what's just going to get a lot of likes or mm-hmm. what's in trend. It's you're you're doing it from your heart and, 100%. You're, and you're, you're it has a purpose behind it. It's not. I love that. That's, that's really powerful. It's the real um, in your own. So after high school mm-hmm. and did you go to college for fashion? 
Yes. Okay. I, I went to college for, um, I studied fashion merchandising and uh, business marketing. Amazing. And I, um, I mean, what the the best for me for college was my like history of costume classes and Ooh. things of that nature because I was able to really learn um, things and how fashion is one big cycle. Yeah, it's it's literally one big cycle. There's nothing new under the sun when it comes to fashion. It's all about taking ideas that have been put out there in some way, shape, or form and making it your own. Right. You know. So, I taking those classes really taught me that early on. So mm-hmm. I've always um been one of those people that literally could take anything and make it something. Yeah. I could take these drapes in here and pin and drape and, and right. Yeah. Anything. Right. In college we would do fashion shows and I used uh trash bags mm-hmm. and all type of just like mater- like unconventional material to mm. compile looks. I it's all for my love for editorial. Like Yeah. If I could walk around in the editorial world I would That's incredible. And can I ask you just Mm -hmm. in your journey of being a celebrity stylist and just creating art and just being in this creative world, have you ever had a moment where it was kind of like a pinch me surreal moment of you kind of made that connection to your younger self of like, oh my gosh, like this is my dream come true or I made it or like, whoa, or oh my gosh, is this real life? 100%. I mean, I sometimes have moments just driving in the car. Yeah. Um, and I look out my window and I see the Hollywood Hills and palm trees and a blue sky. And yeah. I'm like, I live in Los Angeles. You know what I'm saying? Yes, like, yes. Things that I grew up, things and people that I grew up watching on TV, I, I now have their number in my phone. Right, you know what I'm, right. And, so it's... I do. I have those moments quite often. And I also I also try and force those moments in moments of frustration because it allows me to continue to hold on to gratitude. Yes. You know, so, yes. To answer your question, yes, those moments are important. Um, I'm so grateful for those moments and they help. They really, really help me. That's so special. And I have moments like that, too. Mm -hmm. And for me, I just I have such huge dreams and I can have moments myself of just doubt or thinking well but Megan like I do that to my own self and I'm like oh no little Megan like my little inner child that wants to think no that's not anything is possible and Mm -hmm. my mom is someone that I talk to probably 10 times a day on FaceTime (laughs) she's just like my anchor and I'm just Mm -hmm. like she's like Megan you're fine And she, you know, will just say, okay, Megan, I mean, you can say anything you want, but the fact of life is that everything you have going on right now Mm -hmm. is something you prayed for three years ago when you first were starting out at 20 years old. Now you're 24. Look how much you've accomplished. And she just brings that like that just kind of full circle clarity of, Mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, wait. I do get in my own head too much and I actually am fine. Everything's amazing. And I want to, you know, have soak in those moments. Yeah. I mean, you even having her as an anchor is amazing because you yeah. have a, you have a physical being. Yes. That you can reach out to and reach back to, you know, free of charge, like a therapist, yes. you know what I'm saying? Like yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have her and, 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 and who better than your mom? Mm. And, and the fact that she gets it yes, and has gotten it from the get-go yes, is also another thing you should be extremely grateful for. Oh, I, I am. I, yeah, listen, family getting it, oh, wow, you can you can really get a lot more done. Um, if that's a battle, you're not fighting, you know? Yes. So that's beautiful. I'm yeah. happy for you. Yeah, it's just, it's special. And, I mean... I I love that you spoke at Pasadena City College, by the way. I think that's, yes, because I love just the teen and young adult and the youth Mm -hmm. world. And I obviously am so passionate about just inspiring them because Mm -hmm. I think at that age, you're so sensitive and you're kind of blossoming into yourself. And Mm -hmm. I think I just remember, you know, being in high school, sitting in class so many times and thinking, I mean, I sit around these kids these other students all day long and I know nothing about them really except for my friend group and I just remember 
craving, you know, just literally to sit in a circle and have honest conversations about, do you feel the same way? And just making a deeper connection and just having breakthroughs and epiphanies. And I think it's just important to inspire teenagers, especially when they're that young. It's like, just take care of yourself yeah. and self-love. And besides the basic, you know, we're going to learn about the uh, <laughs> World War II today, but mm -hmm. also what about just meditation, connecting to your body, trusting your gut feeling, loving yourself, checking in with yourself? And I, and I honestly feel like that's not really even pushed or talked about amongst the younger kids. No. You know, like, it sucks to go back to it, but it's just like everything is so instant mm -hmm. and insta and, and, and they're being stressed out. Mm -hmm. They're really being stressed out. Yes. You know? Um, a freshman was actually at the panel and she stood up and asked a question and was like, oh, you know, I just, you know, I just wanted to ask because I, I, I feel so pressured all the time, you know, not only by, you know, my friends and, you know, things that I see, but also mm -hmm. my parents, you know, she's um, uh, she was a, she's an immigrant, I, I think, I, yeah. if I remember correctly. And she was just like, she's the first of her first of her generation to even make it to, co you know, make it to college. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, to be on the path to make it to college, and wow. so she was like, um, "I just feel so um, heavy all the time." And, and the first thing I told her, I said, "Ma'am, you're a freshman. Like, embrace where you are. Breathe. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yes. Like, you, you've you've accomplished so much already with how far you've gotten. Mm -hmm. So just just take your time. And I told her about you know filtering and fluffering and and, and making sure that what she surrounds herself with." And what she allows into her mental, mm -hmm. her psyche, like yes. make sure these are things that are comforting to you. Yes. Because you don't want to be a freshman stressed out about what you're going to do in five years. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, let it come to you. That's the beautiful thing about that's the beautiful thing about her position is that, you know, thing she can meet it halfway. Yes. So. Good for you yeah. for I mean just being such a beacon of warm positivity. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I'll be trying to tell them. Oh, I love that. And when you just, I just, I'm so fascinated by your story. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I love fashion too. And I think it's just, I mean, I could talk about it for hours, but I just feel like the way we express ourselves gives us so much freedom mm -hmm. and joy. And it's just, it's an outlet. It's a way that we feel more connected to ourselves and our bodies and just the freedom that we get to choose what we put on our bodies and we get to choose what we buy and mm -hmm. we can just celebrate our emotions and what we're feeling that day. It's true. Um, I mean, fa fashion is such a interpretation. And a lot of people I feel like do it um, or it's an emotional yeah. thing. Because yeah. um, some days I wake up and I say, you know what? I'm wearing black. Mm. You know, yeah. Like I, I actually gravitate towards darker colors. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I'm not afraid of color. Yes. Um, but some days I just want to wear black. I mean, mm. it's it. I, some days I don't mind being stoic. I mean, just in my just in my presentation, never in my energy or communi or you know mm -hmm. communication with people do I want to be that way but some days I just feel like drawn back yes. visually yes um and I mean of course today I put on like uh, yeah. <laughs> this pink uh flannel so I just yes. you know I felt like being a little jovial yeah no you look amazing I love everything about your outfit thank you um in your life mm -hmm. when you've gone through hardships or challenges is there something that just helped you overcome them or something that you naturally gravitated towards or just something that was like your beacon of light whether it was a person or just someone's post on social media or something that just kind of gave you that new level of mm -hmm. I'm fine and I can overcome this well growing up it was my grandma yeah. So um, it was her in initially from the start, and then as I got as I got older, I mean, it honestly it honestly was a couple of things like I'm just seeing other people smile and win. I'm such a giver, mm -hmm. so when I'm when I'm feeling down or frustrated, I I try to 
do things, you mm-hmm. know, um, f- for people or yeah. like, like, like it brings me great joy to do my, my motivational post every morning. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I try to approach things in that manner to be motivated again, mm-hmm. to be re-motivated and to also, you know, to remind myself about the, the journey I've been on and how far I have come. Yeah. Um, it's all it's it's really outside of you know doing for other people it's it's mm-hmm. all internal mm-hmm. i just try to you know search within myself mm-hmm. to make to, to to make more light yes that's amazing oh, it's just so refreshing <laughs> talking to you because i just you have such a warm energy about you you really do and just your vibe is so contagious and you smell mm-hmm. really good <laughs> um <laughs> but thank you for you Growing up in Alabama, and then now, do you live in L.A. full time? Yep, I've been here six years. Wow, I've been here five years. Five? Oh, you came right after me. Yeah, huh? yeah. <laughs> I literally, I, I was in Atlanta, and I had just moved back from New York. Mm-hmm. I had, li- I was living in New York for two and a half years. Um, mm. New York was such a beautiful nightmare. Mm. You know, it was one of those things where. I had just up and and went and and did it because yes. I, I you know I feel like in when if you love fashion and yes. you know fashion you know that is there yeah and so um, that was my first goal mm-hmm. get to New York fill it out fill it out and see you know how you can maintain and I did I did it for two and a half years wow I um I literally went there with two hundred and fifty dollars to my name are you serious <laughs> I promise. Because when people tell me this, sto- I mean, just like my mouth is on the floor because I hear of these stories mm-hmm. of just, you know, people like Tony Robbins and a lot of my idols. But then to actually, you literally had 250. And and, and, the, and the funny thing is, wow. is if I hadn't gone there, I wouldn't be here. Right. You know, because while I was there, I interned for um, at this uh, fashion library. Yes. It's called Albright Fashion yeah. Library. They actually have one in LA now. Yes. I interned there for ten dollars a day. <laughs> oh my and I was gosh. couch couch surfing, couch yeah. hopping. Some nights I stayed on the train all night. Like I literally it, it, I wanted it. Yeah. I wanted to be there. You know what I'm saying? I had to experience what this this New York fashion life was like, and I and it was about all means necessary energy that I had when I approached it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I knew I was like, look, I told myself it's gonna be hard, so just mm-hmm. deal with it. You know, fight yeah. through it, and it'll 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 work itself out. So while I was interning at Albright, I um I ended up just working my way into being the best intern. Like I just you know I did yeah. what I had to do. I did what I yes. needed to do. To make the owner, you know, lo- like me, mm-hmm. you know. And one day, um, I came in. I'll never forget. It was pouring down raining, pouring <laughs> down raining. And so at Albright, the actual building, um, it's uh, she, the owner. She owns like an entire like floor of a huge building yes. in Cooper Square. And when you come into the building, on one side is the actual show showroom where we worked. Yes. And then on the other side, like the, the opposite side, is like her living quarters. Mm-hmm. So came in and, you know, it was almost as if she was like the Wizard of Oz. Because when we when we first yeah. started working there, they were like, you know, don't ever speak to don't ever speak to Irene. Don't ever like, you know, if she comes in and you see her, you just, you know, you just go right in. She doesn't like to be bothered. Yes. And so I come in <laughs> drenched, wet, took my, my trench off um, and I hung it in mm. and the door to her living quarters was like cracked open. Yeah. And so I just hear this voice like, who's that? And I'm like. Should I say something? Should I make a run? You know, I didn't even yes. know because they had yes. they, they had built up this thing about her. This like persona of yeah. like, don't look her in the don't eye. Look, or... Exactly. And so she asked like three like, times, like, who's that? And I was like, uh, it's Casey. And she was like, oh. She was like, I've heard so much about you. She was like, Can, she was like, come in here for a second. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> on the cop. <laughs> I'm looking like sh- I'm looking like should I go? Like, yes. What, what should I do? Yes. So she was like, "Come in, come in, come in," like that. And so she kind of like walked around the corner, yeah. ushered me in. Yeah. And I'm like, "Oh my god!" In my head, I'm like, "Oh my god!" So when I walk in, I mean, it 
it was literally like what is the what is the the show million dollar million dollar listing yes yes it was like some, it was literally set up like that she had like that was my first time ever seeing you know how people have the the bears the bear head and the bear fur laid out on the floor like super just like that mounted like yeah like yes. super long she had like three of them I mean, it was books. It 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 was like it was like a museum. It was books. It was shoes. It was just it was oddly beautiful. Yes, you know what I'm saying. Yes, yes. And she brought me in. She sat me down. She was like, "Oh my God, you're you're wet. Would you like some tea?" She was like being so nice. Were you just like, <laughs> yeah? I was so nervous, but after after a couple of minutes, I was like, "All right, you have to yes get it together." And then she goes on to say, "You know, I've heard so much about you. I just want to thank you, you know, for um, doing such a good job with my business. Yeah. Like, I, I just yeah. I appreciate you." And she was like, "I want you to go somewhere with me," and I said, "Uh, okay." Uh huh. She gets dressed. We go back downstairs. This is uh, her car service is waiting for. Yeah, her. We both yeah. we get in. We drive. We drive up to uh, Fifth Avenue. Yeah. Um, in Madison. Yeah. And we go to Bergdorf Goodman, which is like you know one of the most yes. prestigious you know retail stores in the world, and they usher her in through this back door. You know this whole back door and all this kind of stuff. How fun! I mean, oh my, it's just like whoa. amazing. And so what we were actually doing was going to a sample sale, and when wow. when, when um, they have like all the flagship stores on Fifth yeah. Avenue have sample sales, they call her because she's one of the like tycoons in the city. Yes, that get first dibs on all the things that they're selling yes. to put into her showroom. Amazing. So we were walking around Bergdorf. We went to all Chanel, Prada. We went to every store and she was just like pick you know pick what you think works i know you know the showroom like whatever you whatever you think were is you beautiful. just in heaven i <laughs> i died oh that's so dreamy i died yeah so while i was at bergdorf i'm walking around the 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 lady who was uh you know handling everything mm-hmm. for us we ended up just having a conversation yeah. and before I, and before we left she was like here take my card yes you know if you need anything, just shoot me yeah. an email, blah, you know, yeah. all that. I'm like, okay, thank you. Like, I hope Irene knows it, you know, whatever. Yes. And so, <clears throat> fast forward about, I inter- I stayed with Albright for about six or seven months. Wow. And um, it, the winter, winter time had came. I, it was freezing. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I, I, that I wasn't prepared for. I, yeah. lived, you know, I, I come from the south. Uh, the winter in the in, up north is yes. totally different. Yeah. So I had got to a point where I was like, I have to go. I was like, oh, right. I, have to, I, have to, right. I have to go because I was only making $10 a day. Right, and, right. And the moment that I decided that that's what I was going to do, I reached into my laptop bag and her card was there. The lady that I had met at Bergdorf. Mind you, I hadn't spoken to her since I was. I, had, that, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> I mean, I believe that's. I emailed her, mm-hmm. like not even thinking that she would remember me, not even thinking right. that she would respond. Right. I just told her flat out, I was like, hi, and, you know, I just came across your card again. You know, so we met cool. at Berg, you know, we met at Bergdorf yeah. some months ago. I'm still interning and I've just gotten to a point now where, I, you know, I need a bigger and better opportunity. Right. She immediately emailed me back and was like, come see me tomorrow. <gasps> So I went back wow. to Bergdorf. We sat down. I talked to her just about my life, kind of like what we're doing. It literally yes. turned into a podcast. Yes, you know? no. <laughs> it's like five minutes, an hour later. And so that's where I was born. Correct. Exactly. And she got me a job. I went from $10 a day to 15 an hour at Bergdorf Goodman. Oh, my. And I was afraid to touch the door handle when I first moved there. <laughs> And now, right. you know, I'm, uh, f- seven months later, I'm working right. inside the quarters. So that was one of my first times knowing that if you embrace the process, that that yes. was like a, you know, that yes. was like an, a true example for yes. me that I that I went through myself. Yes. Um, and the moment that I wanted to give up on the process. I, yeah. Had I not looked at my, my bag, had I just went ahead and called and was like, Mom, I'm, Mom, I'm ready to come. You know, it, any of that, I would have probably missed the whole opportunity to right. to stay there and to, wow. and to work there. So that's just one of, that's just a little story I wanted to share because it's so important to 
embrace those things. I love what you said, Casey, about just you never gave up and you kept, you know, you reached out to that lady and on her card and like had you never have just emailed her and just gave it a chance and just trusted your gut feeling. It's like, you know, what would have happened? But it's like, look at where you are. That's so incredible. Yeah, I'm so grateful. And again, though, that's a moment that I, I, I a lot reflect on when I'm in, you know, when I need to yes. pick her up or, yes. or to be reminded that I'm doing right and yeah. that I'm correct, you know, I'm on the correct path. Yes. And yeah, it saved my life mm -hmm. because I don't know what would have happened had I, you know, allowed that to slip through my fingers. Right. I would have. I could have been doing, I could have been so complacent in doing things that uh, that I don't want to do or weren't right. inspired by, but right. I'm so glad I was able to stay in that bubble. Yeah. I, I was able to stay in it. <laughs> That's so amazing. And I want to ask you a question because mm -hmm. a lot of my fans and people who just reach out to me and follow me on social <coughs> media, a lot of them are teenagers and young adults and I get so many questions mm -hmm. about like, how do I follow my dreams? And I have anxiety and I don't know what to do and you know, confidence and body image issues. If there, let's say there's a teenager calling in and this is like a radio station uh -huh. and they had a question for you and they just said, how do I overcome what I'm going through? You know, I'm 15. I feel like just the, the world is over and I don't see the light and I don't, how do I get to where I want to be? And how, like, what would your best advice be? Well, initially, I think when you, when you get into those type of um, energy bubbles, you have to choose to not allow it to, you know, yes. manifest in your life. You, it's it's yeah. lit, it, it's it it sounds cliche. Yes. But it's a physical thing like nope. Not doing, you know, like yes. like if you walking in a scare a haunted house and you see a dark room, you like I'm not I'm not going in there. So true. You know, you have to choose it and sometimes you have to choose it out loud. Mm. You know, I do it all the time. I'm like, "No, I'm not. if you talk to yourself, you you feel it more than just a mental yes. shut off." Like, yes. mm, but if you like, "No, I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm not staying in this space. I'm not going down that spiral." I'm not going exactly. Yeah. I'm not allowing that to overcome my life. Yes. yes. I'm not. Yes. That's the first thing. Yes. And then from there, I think that's when you start um, cushioning, you know, your life and your mind yes. with things that will help you continue, that will help that decision yes. be a, right and appropriate for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like what you watch, what you read, yes. what you look at, yes. all of those things. You know what I'm saying? Find what, some, what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Movies, music. Music is huge for me. Yes. Music is huge for me. I love that. Because it puts me somewhere that I could literally be on a on a wet road and I could put on a record, mm -hmm. uh, a certain song, mm -hmm. and then I, I'm I'm now on a long desert, mm -hmm. windy road with the top down yeah. and chiffon blowing in the wind. Like, uh, that's where I go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds weird, but that's where I go. And yes. I, I that's what I do. I, I say no out loud. Yes. I, I, I say it out loud to, to really tell myself yes. as if I'm talking to someone else. Yeah. Um. No, I'm not doing this. Yep. You're not doing this. Mm -hmm. And then I from there I go and I make sure that everything that I that I yeah. listen to, that yeah. I look at, it caters to that. It caters to that answer. Mm. It caters to me choosing not to allow it to happen. That's so powerful. It's real. And it's real. Energy is real. Your thoughts are real. And like everyone just it's you like my grandpa used to say this all the time. He used to say, I never met him, but he used to tell my mom, mm -hmm. Courtney, it's up to you how you do in life. 100%. It's up to you. If you're happy, it's up to you to be happy. Correct. It's not up to your brother. It's not up to your employer. Like it's not up to your boss. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. And you make that choice. You your your energy is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And you have to create those boundaries. Yes. With people, with other energy. It's even boundary like boundaries with what you choose. If you mm -hmm. if that if that movie or that book or that song doesn't help you, it's a boundary there. Ooh, yeah. It's a, you cr so true. Don't cross it. I love that. I just recently went to a um a Reiki healer too and I was able yeah. 
I love Reiki. I love, oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I literally went on Valentine's Day because I didn't have one. So mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm pouring all this love back into myself. Good for you. And I went and she helped me understand boundaries yes. that I had, I had, you know, they had become loose yes. within me. And she was like, don't let that happen. Mm. So it's, you know, it's interesting that I'm here today and that's being touched on because she reminded me of why those are so important for Mm -hmm. elevation and progression. Powerful. And if you, Casey, had the opportunity to Mm -hmm. sit with your whatever age you want, 13, 14, 15, 16 year old self, Uh and just tell yourself one thing, what would it be? (laughs) Don't wear that. I'm just playing. (laughs) (laughs) I would have many of those conversations. Um, I would tell my I would tell myself to to like fo- be fearless. Yeah. Follow follow what burns in you. Yes. And at that time, you know, I I covered up a lot because I wanted to feel cool for where yeah. I was yes. and who I was around. Yes. Yes. And I allowed my environment to really dim you know, put a lid on yes. what was really burning and bubbling mm-hmm. inside of me. So I would just tell my younger self to take the lid off, mm-hmm. turn the gas up. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's amazing. Okay, so quickly, I have a little mm-hmm. rapid fire question. Okay. Um, I love asking all my guests this, just super on the fly. What would you say? Mm-hmm. So first one, if you have ever experienced something in your life where you felt that you – didn't know how you could see the light again and you felt just that kind of stuck feeling of mm-hmm. you know how how am i going to get to my dreams how do i you just felt that oh my gosh i really don't know what to do what did you do whether it was you kind of said an affirmation or you made a physical change you moved to like what did you do yeah i i left yeah i left i knew i had to change my environment yeah if i wanted to um see different or do yes. different yes you know i knew i had to do that so i immediately once i graduated i said i'm i'm going away yeah i'm going away and i'm going to experiment in these different cities until i'm able to catch my footing wow. and here i am i never said I, ne- I never stayed in a place that drained me if wow. it didn't fill me up like you got to get away from them drains and get you some fountains I love <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I love that. I mean, there's people in life, I feel like everyone in life, they're either are a drain or a tap. Mm-hmm. They're either flowing, giving, or they're taking. Or they're taking, Drain, 100%. Drains are faucets, honey. Drains are taps. Like Choose. And I'm, uh, I stay far away from them drains. Me too. Drains complains. <laughs> That's my next Instagram caption. Seriously. <laughs> um, and my last question is... If you have ever in your life experienced any type of anxiety or Mm -hmm. depression or panic attacks and you felt just stuck mentally, Mm -hmm. how did you get yourself out of that? Or what would your advice be to anyone listening who feels just related to anxiousness or negative thinking? Do you have one tip that's a really good way that always gets you in a good mood? I first breathe. Yeah. I I, I, I listen to myself and create patterns in my breathing Mm -hmm. to just become one and centered again, Mm -hmm. because I feel like anxiety is a is a lot of different things. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And 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 it can be in like, what is it? Frustration is um, blocked expression. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if if you're not able to ex- express something or get mm-hmm. something out, it's you're frustrated. Yes. So I, I I try to breathe first, and then I try to assess what I'm upset about. Right. And 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 a lot of times, Megan, there are small things that all we have to do is say no to. I Lo- know. It's a lot of times, <laughs> and a lot of time, most of the time, and it's also assumptions. Oh assuming yes. and thinking that it's one way or thinking it's going to be one way. Anticipating. You, anticipating yes. something that may not ever happen. Right. We have to relinquish that. We have to yeah. re- let it go. Release yeah. that. Release that. Wow. And really look at what's going on right in front of you. That's amazing. Um, I... 
thank you so much, 100%. Casey, for taking the time and just sharing your wisdom and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I respect so much who you are and your thank story. You. I appreciate it. And I hope everyone takes away so many just like amazing bits of just pure knowledge. I have two more questions for Rapid Fire. So okay. one, if you could be any type of potato chip, what would you be? Oh, um, potato chip. I love a ruffle. Oh, <laughs> like plain ruffles or uh -uh, sour cream? No? Sour cream and uh, cheddar. The deluxe. <laughs> Oh. Boy, you can eat them things on the side of, with, a, with a steak. Mm. Ooh. I'm telling you. Oh, my gosh. We used to fight over those in, like, high school. Yeah. And the vending machine had one more bag left. <laughs> Somebody had to go down for them. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and one last question. When you were young, uh -huh. what is the most embarrassing thing that ever happened to you? Oh, my God. The most embarrassing thing? Yeah. <laughs> the most embarrassing thing that happened to me oh my gosh so it was a big our rival high school basketball game mm -hmm. and it was <laughs> packed it was yeah. packed like bleachers top to bottom yes. pack 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 i fell from the top to the bottom no way yeah <laughs> bad. Oh, bad I tried to play it off so bad it's like oh, uh, <laughs> yeah like I follow on people <laughs> <laughs> this just reminds me of those <laughs> those memes when runways when models are rocking the runway and, and they're, they're like, trying to get they're like they're fell and they're like trying to get back and but they look like literally like a baby deer learning how, how to, to walk, walk and yeah I sh that's how I felt after I got up I'm like man I just had to walk oh. out that's so cringy. It that's is like, cringy. I oh. hate. Uh, that's amazing. What do we do? I know. What do we do? <laughs> Anywho, Casey, thank you so much it's for so taking welcome, the Megan. time to come on my podcast and just mm -hmm. share so much incredible wisdom and knowledge. And I'm so excited for everyone just to take away how you can follow your dreams and just how you made it happen mm -hmm. in your unique journey. 100%. It's all about the uniqueness. It's all about yes. the uniqueness and embracing yes. your process. I love it. Not to the left, not to the right. Yes. Look straight. I love it. And thank you, everyone, so much for tuning in to Reaching New Heights with me, Megan Gallagher. You can find me on Instagram at Megan W. Gallagher. And where can everyone find you? Oh, it's easy. Icon tips across all social media platforms. Amazing. And do you have any cool things coming up that you want to share? Cool things coming up. Well, I'm working on a relaunch of um, a clothing brand that I started last year. Amazing. It's, it's called Void Merch. That's V-O-I-D. Yes. Merch, which stands for Vibrant Originals Intercepting Design. I love it. Thank you so much, Casey. You're welcome, mate.